Welcome, everyone, to a special episode of the Fake Nerd Book Club. I'm here today, Brandon T. McClure, with Ryan Parrott, who is a comic book writer uh, who's done things such as Star Trek, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oberon was your other creator-owned series, correct? That's correct, yes. And uh, and uh, coming up soon, Rogue Sun. Yep, Rogue Sun. I'm Finally. very excited. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, thank you again for being on the show. I uh, really appreciate it. Oh, thanks. Yeah, this is a pleasure, man. Um, all right, so let's just get right into it. Um, so Rogue Sun is your new series. Can you tell us a bit about it? Uh, yes, it's uh, so uh, I was 13 when Image was started and all I ever and I bought every single dang book. And mm -hmm. uh, the idea of actually doing my own superhero with Image is absolutely crazy and took 20 years, but it's awesome or mm -hmm. longer than that, maybe 30 years, actually. Um, and so it's about a kid. Uh, it's about sort of like this rebellious teenager who uh, his father left when he was like, you know, two and sort of grew, grew up in sort of with the wrong path um, and then finds out one day that his dad's passed away. But in doing so, has left was that was actually a superhero and that he has left him his powers and mantle and so in order to sort of follow in his sort of become a superhero he has to learn about the father that uh he's hated his entire life uh i kind of look at it as like what if flash thompson inherited the powers of spider-man kind of thing so i it's oh. yeah yeah that's the way i was looking at it because i i've always liked those types of characters like i you know peter parker and the good guys are always fun but i I'm, i i actually liked it more of the idea of following a person that was not necessarily a good person who is sort of forced into becoming one yeah i was actually that was one of my questions i was going to ask you um because the character you've set up isn't exactly likable. No, he's a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> he's a big jerk. I, I mean, there's the opening scene in the first book, without getting too much spoilers, one of the scenes when you meet him, there's a there, he's he's got his best friend trapped in a locker. And yeah. what I thought was interesting is most of the times the, the stories you read follow the guy in the locker. And mm -hmm. so this one follows the guy on the outside. That's really smart. I was um I I remember um reading the preview pages for it and being like, oh, weird um yeah. <laughs> yeah so that's a really good analogy the idea of um flash thompson being spider-man but there's another side to this which is that this is part of the radiant black universe right uh how did that come about uh well i've known kyle since college um oh really yeah, yeah, we went to Chapman together. Um, we were both doing film. He was, I was, uh, I think I was like two or three years ahead of him. But we knew a common friend of ours who was a filmmaker, and uh, I wrote a short, short film for, um, for my for the, for the director. And I came on set just to hang out what was going on. And um, I remember sitting there on next, and what the, as a writer on a film set, you, there's nothing to do. <laughs> so I was sitting there, and I looked down at the audio guy, and was Kyle sitting on the ground like editing his short film that he had made, which was this superhero thing called The League. And he showed it to me and I was like, that's awesome, man. And we started talking and found out we both love comic books. And so when he graduated, we, he moved to L.A. We, he was like, no, you know, I don't know that many people in L.A. So we started hanging out. And in the middle of that, he started to write comic books. And so while I was working at Bad Robot as an assistant at the time, and uh, so Kyle would call me and be like, hey, I got this idea. What do you think? And we'd break story together. And so when he started getting doing really well in the comic book world, he was like, hey, you, would you be interested in, you know, helping me write Batman for an issue just to help me get through this because he was doing some other books. And so I did. And so that's kind of how we started writing together. And then what a break. I know I got that's how you do it. That's that's the if you want to work in comic books, uh, meet somebody in college who just breaks in for you and does all the hard work. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then um, after that, we uh, he started writing Power Rangers and then through like a, like a weird confluence of events, I ended up writing Power Rangers as well. And so we start, we were like doing it at the same time. So we've been writing together for a long time. So this is the long way of saying when he finally decided he wanted to do his own image universe, we were actually at a football game. And he told me he's like, yeah, I thinking about I'm having a great time doing this book at image. I know you've always wanted to make a superhero. What about doing it and and like let's do this? Like, and so he he's like, they want to go back to the roots of what started Image now that it's been you know 30 years. Mm -hmm. And so I pitched him an idea and and he was like, Well, like if you're gonna do that, let's do it as a bang. Let's 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 do it as a crossover, let's 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 find a jumping on point for people so it's it's you know, so they know and that we can sort of like ride this wave together. And so that's how it all started. It was just you know, your friends hanging out and the same thing that I'm sure the thousands of people are doing right now, you know, just coming up with ideas. We actually got to sit down and go, wow, we're actually gonna get to do this. Yeah, that's a really good. So there's a couple of things that you, th that you brought up that I wanted to go back to. Uh, you mentioned that you were an assistant with uh, Bad Robot. Yeah. You've written Star Trek comics, specifically the Bad Robot Star Trek comics. Yes, yes. That was some of the first books I did, yeah. Is that how that connection happened or was that kind of 
uh, serendipitous. No, I was, so I'd written, so I wrote Batman for that first thing. And I remember going and buying my first book and, uh, I came back to work that day and I put it down on the, uh, uh, I put it down on the thing. And one of the producers, um, uh, Brian Burke, uh, who is mm-hmm. JJ's producing partner, Water by is like, Oh, you write comic books. I was like, yeah, I write comic books. He's like, you know, we do Star Trek books. I was like, I, I do know that. He's like, would you like to do one? And I was like, sure. <laughs> and so he set me up with Mike Johnson, who's been writing the power, the Star Trek books forever and is amazing. And, and so we sat down and I think Mike was a bit suspicious about what I was going to, if I was going to be taking his job or something like that, but mm-hmm. we became really, really good friends and we started writing together. He taught me everything about how to write comics. Like he taught me all the, like, like working with him and, and, and like how to do that stuff. So that's how we got in there. And it was helpful because I'd already, you know, I was with JJ and, and, and there for into darkness. And so I was on set. So I knew all that stuff and it yeah. was helpful. Yeah. But it was a really great experience. And, and, and and uh, and I'm I will be forever in debt to Mike for 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 putting up with me. That's awesome. Uh, yeah. I real quickly um, going through your like um, going through like your 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 page of like what you've done. I uh, was like, oh, he wrote Star Trek. Do I? Oh yeah, I have all of your Star Trek books up here. Oh, on my awesome. shelf right here. <laughs> That's wonderful. Thanks, man. That was a lot of fun, man. I really, I, I, I we had uh, my favorite is the one we did, which was uh, Star Trek Manifest Destiny. Oh, I love was, that one. That was like we were like, what we want to do a Star Trek movie. We want to yeah. do like just a crazy Klingon battle Star Trek movie, and like that was so much fun. I had that's the most fun I've ever had writing. I think a Star Trek book. Doesn't that one? Forgive me, it's been a while since I've read it, but doesn't that one reintroduce um, Christopher Plummer's character into the Kelvin timeline? Sort of. We created a new one called Sh- uh, Shintok, who was an albino. Um, right. Yeah. So that was it's a li- he looks like Christopher Plummer, but he's not the actual same character. Yeah. Right. But, yeah. Um, Star Trek Discovery took that albino concept from you. Oh, yes, they did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. No shade to Star Trek Discovery. It's a fine no, show. It's fine. Um, so uh, there's another thing, another aspect that I wanted to go back to, which is that um you wrote with kyle higgins for power rangers uh, with power rangers so you did galgo power rangers right yeah. yes um which i loved by the way um i we did a mighty morphin power rangers read through and i was like oh i want to read some gogo power rangers too and so i read both of those at the same time i thought they were both excellent oh awesome thank you um and then you eventually took over the mainline power rangers book and then you relaunched Power Rangers with Mighty Morphin and Power Rangers. <laughs> My goal is to try and make as many com- confusing Power Ranger titles and openings uh, and make the timeline as hard to read as possible. That was, I think I've been successful. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, Gogo was uh, Daphna Plebin, who's been running, who was the editor on the book, who from the very beginning when Kyle first started, um, she, I was on a panel with her and she, uh, we, we, we got into a disagreement about Winter Soldier because I was like, I didn't like the ending and she just basically destroyed me um she's good at that uh, but because of that we she's like hey you know i've read some of your other stuff do you want to come in and possibly talk about doing power Rangers? and she was like she wanted to do a book that was like 30 percent monsters and 70 percent like what's it like to actually be a teenager growing up and having superpowers and, I, and she's like i want to do sort of the ultimate spider-man version of power rangers and it's like that's exactly what i want to write let me try that and so we worked on that and so i wrote that with her for um, almost two years and in the middle of that kyle did shattered grid and so there was an opportunity sort of like to cross over between the two and I just didn't doing that after he'd sort of, I think after, after shadow grid, there wasn't really much Kyle needed to do really. He, he kind of killed and broke everything. Yeah. So, so he was like, I'm going to go off and do my own thing. And then they were like, Hey, since you wrote shadow grid, would you be interested in trying to take over the main line and not only take over the main line, would you like to do two books at the same time? Maybe three, if you want to do the power engine industry crossover. So they, they, you know, I, I wrote a lot of power. I think I wrote almost a hundred issues in two and a half years. Wow, which, that's insane. Which, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, but it's been really fun and 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 very rewarding. And uh, they're great characters, and the fans are like, it's really fun to write for the this group of people because like they the fans love them so much. Um, so they keep you honest, they keep you they keep you working hard, and um, but also there's just so much great mythology that the book that the show never really got a chance to go into mm-hmm. that we've sort of been able to take and expand out and. And, you know, things that like, you know, getting into who Zed is and getting into who Zor- how where Zordon came from and finding all those little things. And so I think that's the nice thing about comics is that people love characters and therefore they they want to spend enough time with him to be able to slow down and and build things out. Yeah, there was a lot of things that you did in Go Go Power Rangers that I really liked. Like you, you introduced the idea that um, one of the bullies was friends with Billy when they were kids. Yeah, Skull, Skull uh, and Billy were buddies when they were kids. Yeah, yeah, which is super sad. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then. There's uh, so I wanted to ask you. So you're a, were you a big Power Rangers fan growing up? 
Not really. I was about 14 when the book, when the show came out. So like I started watching it sadly, like I was like, Oh, the pink Ranger is very attractive. So, so, like, <laughs> so I started for that, but mm -hmm. uh, I watched the first season of it, but then I kind of, I kind of drifted off and I've since gone back and watched a bunch of it since then. But like, I, I was, I kind of just caught it just as it started peaking. Like I was, I think I was just aging out of it a little bit because I was going to high school and I was like girls. And stuff right. like that. So yeah. But like, I, I, I've since gone back and, and, uh, and watched it and since, and, and it's like, you know, Kyle always said I thought was a really great way of thinking about writing it. He was just like, don't write the show the way that it is. Write it the way they made you remember it. And wait, sorry, write it the way that it made you feel. And I was like, yes, yeah. that's that's the right way to do it. Because, you know, the way those shows are produced and created with all the, the, the appropriated footage and stuff like that makes for some very interesting story choices and <laughs> so but which is really cool as a writer because you get to go in and and things that didn't make any sense because they were you know like handcuffed because of the footage you get to go in and uh, like there's nothing better as a writer than having restrictions placed against you and then you have to write your way out because it, mm -hmm. it keeps you from hopefully knock on wood keeps you from writing into cliches because you don't have the opportunity yeah yeah i was gonna say like um if I if I didn't know any better, the way that you play with Power Rangers lore and the like from all like the the upcoming issues that I've that I've just kind of heard about through previews, which I I'm subscribed to, and uh, some of the stuff that you've been doing in both those books, it's a, it's some crazy cosmic stuff that the shows would never have gotten away with. Uh, that you're able to play with and i let's assume that you were just this big power rangers fan growing up <laughs> well i mean it's some i mean when you've written as many as i many books i've have you start finding like where are the areas you know one of the things about gogo -Go, if you read it was like it's very tied to the show it was very yeah. much sort of like running in between the episodes i didn't retell any of the episodes but i definitely like mentioned them and you saw moments um it was like telling the stories in between the episodes right but yeah. when you get into the main main books and you're doing something larger the, the thing that you're really trying to find because you want to be able to create stakes. You want to be able to create, you know, stories that like people don't know the endings to, but you're, you know, when you're roughing off the, of the show, I was so excited for areas that hadn't been touched on in the show. Like the idea that we hadn't been to Eltar, the idea that we really didn't know much about their culture and what they wanted. I was like, there's a lot of that. Not only, that's helpful to me because that's stuff that people have always wanted to know that I was able to go into. And when you go in into stuff like where Z, Zed's identity and where that came from and how he works out, and just dealing with all of it and then and then connecting it to like just playing with that world and, and finding ways to bridge the different seasons together, like in space and time force and whatnot. So when you yeah. start doing that, because you have the luxury of, a, you know, a comic book that has an infinite budget and, an, and doesn't isn't, you know, tied to footage, you're able it allows you to make some ties and some and, and connect dots that you wouldn't necessarily be able to on the show. So you're sort of allowed it allowed a, a certain luxury. Yeah, I'll never forget Space Adventure Zordon. <laughs> yeah uh, my favorite one was the one that eleonora drew of him when you first meet him when he's uh when he's there for the birth of rita um he's like wearing like this crazy like cloak and stuff yeah and i was like yeah and i was like oh my gosh who's this guy he's amazing looking <laughs> um so let's get back to rogue son okay um i, I i've been wanting to talk to you about power Rangers for years so i I, pre I appreciate you going on the tangent with me um now, Radiant Black. So because this is the same universe as Radiant Black. So Radiant Black is a very likable main character, a very uh, a main <laughs> character that uh, like immediately relates to people, especially creatives on a on a personal level. Mm -hmm. um, and you want to do something deliberately the opposite of that. Um, did you kind of be like, did you like think about how that would contrast with Radiant Black's main character and? Um, not, not really. No, I, it's not funny you say that. Um, uh, and I think also if you're reading Radiant Black without spoiling anything, the, the way that that story has turned, I think you, they, the Radiant Black has more in common with Rogue Sun now than I think he did when it, when, when it was first pitched to me. Oh, that's uh, true. yeah. So, um, no, I didn't think of it that way. I just always been a really big fan of. I don't want to say anti-heroes, but sort of like the like I'm like my favorite movies are like Nightcrawler and Michael mm -hmm. Clayton. And I just like those characters that are morally ambiguous. Um, now, granted, my character is a little harder than that. But what I liked about the idea of, of Dylan as a main character was is when you when you you know, you meet this kid and he's not a nice person. But you're like when you find out why he's not when you find out, you know, the fact that his father banned him when he was two, that his mother hasn't had a great ability to sort of keep him in check and he's sort of a survivor and because of that it's made him into a bit of a you know a bully and and somebody who pushes people around and the idea i so i like starting him in that position starting him in a place where you wouldn't necessarily like him or feel sympathetic for him but as you start to learn about him as you start to see how he grew up and what then the world he's lived in and you start to see somebody who is who is learning how to help people 
how does that change you? I like the idea of being able to arc him into somebody, hopefully much somebody who's, somebody who's much more sympathetic, hopefully somebody who is not like his father um, and more like, you know, the more traditional hero. But I love the idea of, of not starting him in that place. I I, I think, you know, I, I, but obviously, you know, it's not incredible to say that people like Breaking Bad, but the, what makes Breaking Bad so cool to me is you start off as Mr. Chips and he becomes Scarface. If he had been Scarface the whole time, it's not as interesting. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, you mentioned that uh, Image was interested in making another universe. There was a there was an interesting thing about the solicitation for Supermassive, which will be your character's first appearance, right. um, where they said that um, in the vein of Invincible. Um, so did, did Image kind of come to Kyle Higgins and be like, hey, is there a way we can make Invincible 2.0 or something like that? I don't know if it was exactly Image coming to Kyle. I know that it was more of Kyle wanting to do something in the vein of of Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. And when he, when he talked to Image, it was more like, well, the 30th anniversary is coming up. We'd love to go – like we seen i think image has seen over the last you know over 30 years have seen the sh the books that really have 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 stayed with people are the I mean, look saga is incredible i could go through, there's we could spend an hour here just going through all of the great non superhero books that have been made by image however yeah. what i think is so cool about like the fact that Sp spawn is that what 300 issues now or something like that something like that yeah eric larson's uh savage dragon is that that is in a crazy amount of issues like some of those original founders those those books are those are some of the longest running creator owned books of all time. Mm -hmm. And they're those, they're those superheroes that has this big following of people. And I think they were just excited about the fact that that universe exists and the idea of being able to go back. Now, what I was excited about, and I think what Kyle was, is that we were people who were raised on that or got excited about comic books can now sort of come in and become like the next generation and, and ride the sort of ride and like follow them in their footsteps. And, and, and cause those like, the way that the image original image books are written are very different than they would be written today. Right. Yeah. Like I think when image was started, it was a very artist forward industry. And mm -hmm. in the 30 years, it's really shifted and not all there's I'm like, but the, the writer has become a much more powerful um, creator drive in thing. And so the idea of being in, bringing in some young writers who, who love those books as much as we did and grew up on them and getting our, letting us riff on the, on sort of like the next generation of heroes, I think was something that they were excited about doing. And Invincible was a huge inf influence on Kyle's book and my book. Like I yeah. remember, I remember right, like reading, it was on one of those weekends where you read like 40 issues in one day. Mm -hmm. Like I bought like the first two trades and then I read them in the morning. And then I think I went in at like lunch and bought two more. And the guy's like, you're back. And I'm like, dude, I already read the first two. So like, yeah, like the, that run is, is seminal and one of the best. Yeah. I, uh, I really like Invincible. I've been going through the comic after I read the show. I'd never read it before. Um, and now having read more of that, I see the influence on Radiant Black and then Rogue Sun mm -hmm. uh, that influence had. But also like b before that, I recognized the Power Rangers influence. Like I really felt like Kyle Higgins was channeling kind of what he wanted to do with Power Rangers more but more in like Radiant Black. Mm -hmm. Um so the idea for so you had the idea for Radiant Black. Kyle Higgins is like, we want to we want to combine the two. Um, how did you partner up with uh, Abel? Is it? Able? Able, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was all Kyle. Kyle, when when Kyle pitched me the book, you or when I was like, I kind of want to do this book, and he's like, but I was like, but I don't know anybody. He's like, I got a guy. I was like, you do. He's like, yeah. I got a guy. He's incredible, and he just sent me his pages, and I was like, dude, he looks like Sean Murphy meets like Dan Mora. Like I was like, this guy's incredible. I thought the same thing. I'm really? So okay. Great. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, this guy's incredible. And so what was um, awesome for me was when I when I sent him the idea for the book, I was like, would you be interested? And I was like, super. He's like, yeah, this sounds great. And I was like, well, what if we start talking about design? the character and I, I literally sent him like i was like i think it should be like a knight that's on fire and he was like okay and he draw he drew it one time and he sent me and i go that's it and i was like can it have maybe a little bit more fire coming out of the scene he's like done and that's that was our design process he did it one time and that's that's a testament to how good he is and how excited i was to work with him because i was like man if, if this it's not that it's never supposed to be that easy yeah no it's yeah. It, the the design is immediately iconic Oh, I, I, I love it. I'm like I said, I'm I'm a, I'm a 90s kid. So like, you know, the Ghost Rider, Dark Hawk, um, you know, Spawn feel like I loved that. I was like, I want it to feel edgy and dark. I, I want it to feel like I love the fire pouring out of it. I just love that. It feels like it's literally like like burning out of him. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's just like it's like Iron Man. If he was just like, you know, like, you know, literally on fire. And so it, 
I think that's the key to so many comic books is like, you got to nail the design. And I, I wish I could take credit for it because mm -hmm. I love it so much, but I, I, it's all Abel and it's all him. And so like, I knew we had something when Declan did that first cover. Cause uh, Kyle sent Declan the first design before he, I was still writing the first issue, I think. And he goes, Hey Declan, like, like check this out. And Declan's like, Oh, I love this design. Can I draw it? Well, I'll do the first cover. And I was like, yes, <laughs> please. And then he said that to me. I'm like, well, we're good. Like if he nails that, like that, Oh my gosh. So, and it's just been, that's the fun of being like all the variants have been done with all the different artists, like Brett Booth did one. And so getting to see people that I grew up with drawing your character and making them look cooler than you ever imagined is just absolutely amazing. I think Capullo has a super massive variant. Yes, he does. Yeah. Yeah. That was nuts. I don't know how Kyle pulled that off. Yeah. Uh, I think he knows him and was just like, Hey man, what do you think? And he was like, sure. And then I, and then I'm like, what Greg, what he, he's going to draw this. Okay, sure. Greg Capullo's going to draw my character. Okay. Pretty I'm, cool. Yeah. I don't know what world we're in anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to talk about a bit about Supermassive. Um, so Supermassive is going to be the first appearance that your character is going to show up and Inferno Girl Red, whose right. trade has not been released yet. It's still, it's finished his Kickstarter, right? That's correct. Yes, it kickstarted I think last year and uh, is coming up this year. Right. So how how is the process between like the three teams kind of working together to create Supermassive? Uh, it was really easy. Um, so Matt and Kyle already write Ultraman for Marvel together, and um, right. Kyle uh, and so Kyle and I worked together on on writing for a while, and then Matt's right taking over Mighty Morphin, and while I stay on power rangers so we've all sort of tangentially worked together mm -hmm. um and so when we 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 broke it really we broke the idea of like okay we'll have all three of these characters together i think we did like four zoom sessions where we just sort of sat and by like the first two was just more like talking and first two was like supposed to be working on it but it ultimately turned into just talking about comic books and you know what you guys see do you like the mandalorian this week sure. uh, <laughs> it turned into that but then slowly we figured out okay like this is really it's not really about it's more about these characters meeting each other and what it's like for these three very different characters to sort of interact. And so it was more about finding that threat that we could bring in that would allow the characters to just sort of partner and, you know, and sort of be together. And so that's how it started. And we wrote it very quickly and all of us sort of just took chunks of it. And I wrote some of my scenes. Like I was like, there's like a road trip kind of element of the book. And I was like, I want to do that. Cause I don't want to do the fighting. I want to do the, them going to the waffle house or whatever, you know, like I want to do that. Right. And so that was what was fun for me. So we all sort of took our strengths and stuff that we wanted to do and then traded scenes together and then sort of like, no, my character wouldn't say that. And that, you know, it was that kind of stuff. So, but it was really easy. I think we wrote it in like four or five days. It was really fast. There's an interesting kind of parallel with like um, the early DC crossovers that would happen where like, it doesn't, you see these three books on the shelf theoretically, and you wouldn't immediately know they're all from the same universe. Right. So like super massive kind of comes together and be like, Oh, this is like my, my three favorite characters coming together for the first time and like merging the three worlds is, is really interesting. Yeah. We, we were excited about the idea of, cause we, I think what you said about the early DC books is like, what was fun is like, I remember being a kid and like when another character came into a book I was reading, like if I, if you like Batman or you like, mm -hmm. you know, then sudden, and then suddenly Swamp Thing wanders into your book, you're like, who's Swamp Thing? And so you only, you get introduced to him through the character that you already know. And so that's what we were, cause I at first was a little not hesitant, but I was like, you know, I like Rogue Sun, something I've been working on for a while. It's not necessarily a spinoff. It's just something that exists in the same universe. Mm -hmm. But, and I was a little nervous about the idea of bringing him in that way. But when Kyle explained to me, he was, when Kyle was sort of like, no man, this is the way to like have everybody kind of like to come in for people who know your power ranger work and people who know radiant black, like they're already going to know you're, they're going to know you. And like, let's have them come in this way. Let's see them all interact with each other. It'll be sort of like the old school way. And then hopefully that will let people go. If they want to know more about these characters, they want to like these characters, then they can sort of follow, follow, you know, the regular title. So it was a little, yeah, I just thought like, and it was just like, a, and I think the hardest thing you're doing in any sort of, you know, in the image comic books at all, or not images, books, comic in general is, finding a place that care like an entry point that is clean and straightforward and simple like it's just there's so like if you go into a comic book store and you're like i want to read batman there's 50 titles if, yeah. if you want to you know what i mean there's it's so hard to just find easy entry points and we were like if we just do it this way super massive if you want to know about these characters it's right here it's right there boom that's everything you need to know and i was like there is a there is an elegance to that that i do think is is missing in today's comic books and they're killing Batman, but he'll still be in 50 books. Yes. He, <laughs> he's dead until he's not, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what are the, I wanted to ask you, like, kind of the big question here that I wanted to ask you, what are the struggles with making an original superhero today? 
Uh, I mean, the hardest thing is, is sort of just finding something new to say. There's so mm -hmm. many options. You know, you really do have to kind of come in with a theme and an idea of what you want the book to be about. Um, and also, I think, and I've said this in several interviews, so I'll, I'll sort of shift it up a little bit, but like this idea of, of like knowing, like, hey, look, if you want to read a superhero book, you've got plenty of options and you have a plenty of established characters that you already know you like. Um, so if I'm going to give you a new character that I want you to come in and spend your money on and follow, I better be willing to make, do something to surprise you, do something unique, do something interesting and new. Uh, I can't just kind of, you can't just paint by the numbers. So I think that's the hardest thing about doing like your, a new book. That's your own is like finding a way to subvert expectations. Also finding a way to subvert even some of your own pitfalls as a writer. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like as when I, I, you know, I've written almost a hundred issues of Power Rangers, and if you go read them, you're gonna see stuff that I do that's pretty consistent. It's like mm -hmm. you know, just there's just things that you do and structure, and everybody has their own little things that they go back to in their toolbox. So for me, one of the things I've been trying to do with Rogue Sun is notice when I'm go, I'm zag when I was when I would usually zig. I think that's right. the hardest thing is it's to find those new things, and that's been fun. To, I mean, that's part of one of the reasons that that Dylan is is the character that he is because I knew writing that character would make me have to find new ways to characterize him new characters. It would put new people in his orbit uh, as opposed to some of the traditional stock characters you might normally find. So it's like yeah. that finding, finding ways to subvert your own expectations, I think is the hardest thing. Yeah. That, that's a really good point. Cause like when you see rogue sun or even radiant black or Inferno Girl red, like immediately they look unique. They are not something that you've seen DC or Marvel do before. Yeah. I mean, right. hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I immediately fell in love with the designs of all three of them and uh, the books. Uh, I'm excited for Infernal Girl Red, but I loved Rogue Sun and Radiant Black. So Great, thank you. Um, I think that's about all I got for you, and we're kind of running up the clock here at this point. Perfect. Um, so I, I'll just say thank you so much for being on. It was really great talking to you. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me on. I mean, I will say this. Uh, it's it's so nice to talk to people about the book for the first time because it's like <laughs> you sit in a room for like a year and you're like, I don't know if this is going to work at all. Um, and it's so nice to talk. And also the nicest thing about this is like it's so helpful to be able to like when you ask good questions, it's like, OK, I have to like by answering them, I actually focus the point of the book and I focus the script. So it, hopefully these things will actually end up in the book and I'm not just painting lip, lip service. So I really appreciate you having me on. Uh, I do have one, one last question. How, how long, because uh, everyone likes to know, how long are your plans for the book? I will write the book as long as people want me to and will continue to, as long as it's financially solvent, I, mm -hmm. I have enough story to go. Um, you know, I think I'm also of the opinion that shorter runs are better than longer runs in the sense, mm -hmm. like, you know, I don't necessarily know if Rogue Sun would hit a hundred. I think I probably would run out of ideas or someone else would have to take over for it. But I do love, I love the idea of sort of, you know, 35 episode 35 issues 40 issues i think that would be a great story and and would keep the i think that keeps you from getting on a treadmill of fighting a monster and learning a lesson about teamwork and you know sure. what i mean like that same thing that everybody does so like i think you know doing something like that but but you know who's to say i will say this uh you always come up with the next story whenever you're struggling with the one you're currently writing so hopefully <laughs> you know yeah so i'm gonna say that when you hit when i'll hit when i hit 50 i'll be like oh yeah i never thought i'd get this far but i literally just couldn't do, i couldn't break 30 so i can't put 50 so <laughs> We'll see what happens that's yeah that'd be fun all right well again thank you so much uh, uh really i really liked rogue sun um excited for more um i'll just real quickly say to the audience rogue sun comes out on february 23rd correct that's what so far yes that's what we're so saying <laughs> and uh super massive which will be your character's first appearance will be out on february 16th um so where can people find you uh, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at that Ryan Parrot, uh, two R's, two T's. Um, and I don't think that's all I'm at. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not on Instagram or Facebook or any of that stuff. So, yeah. All right. Um, so everyone stay, stay tuned for the book. It's great. Um, you can find all of our stuff, Ficknerpodcast.com. Um, this has been a Fickner podcast. So, Hey, so like, and subscribe again. Thank you so much, man. We really, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, yeah, just thank you. My pleasure, man.